Welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you someone that I just started following, but he was referred to me from somebody that I that I just hold in high regard. But I started following none other than Zach White, and he has been just a tremendous, just, just a consistent presentation, a demeanor of like, hey man, you just... Just get things smooth, get things done well. Don't burn yourself out. I mean, he's just got all these incredible things. And I always love to connect with just these inspiring leaders and take a peek behind the curtain just to see what inspires them. Just because I got inspired by Zach the moment I, you know, started following him and, and look at, and watching some of his podcasts. So I wanted to bring to you none other than Zach White. Don't give it up for Zach. Oh man, Gary, I'm <laughs> I'm honored. I mean, and talk about great energy. There's nothing like being super fantastic. I mean, two great words in a row. Right? It, oh, just brilliant. So I'm I'm pumped. Thank you for having me. Oh, Great thank you so here. much, Zach. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, where I'm at in life now, Gary, is a long way from where I started, but today coaching engineering leaders, leaders in technology, people who really do want that success. They have a, a drive, the ambition to do something impactful with their career or their business and to, to lean into that passion that made us become engineers in the first place. But they struggle with all of what life throws at us, the trade-offs, the tension, our families, our health, everything else, and ultimately feel burned out. They feel like I can't get the results that I want without making trade-offs that I'm unhappy with and I'm trapped, I'm stuck in that place. And so we help them to create that career of their dreams in the context of the life of their dreams. And how do we do that in a way, to your point, that is smooth, that's enjoyable, where you can be happy along the way. And it is possible where a lot of people think there's not a way and it's so much fun to help these leaders break out of you know, that cage, if you will, and experience life at a new level. You know, it, it is fantastic, Zach. You know, the your focus or your niche is is engineers. But what I found as I went through your podcast and, and, and looked at some of the things that you're doing, the context and the concepts that you share are universal. And yeah. I, I have found myself kind of like just gathering data. I'm not in the engineering world. But I've been, I found myself gathering some of your insight and your knowledge and some of the guests that's been on your podcast, just some of their insight. And I'm like, man, this is applicable to my world as well. And so I'm going to put your the link to your information, your, your website and our show notes so everyone can check it out because I highly recommend you check out Zach White's website. It is, it's actually, it's there's so much insight and, and, and knowledge and wisdom in it that even if you're in engineering or not, there's, there's so much wisdom in there that you can really glean from the conversation. So we're going to check it out. But Zach, I wanted to connect with you because again, I just found you to be truly inspiring. And so I wanted to reach out what inspires an inspiring leader. And you sent back to me three great points. And I want to talk about these three great points. And the first one you shared the truth about burnout. So talk to us what that means to you how does that inspire you and and how does that you know kind of fit into your your world gary in many ways you know we talked about the global pandemic in COVID 19 but the unspoken pandemic is burnout in our corporations and that was true back when i was an engineer at whirlpool and when my career began back in 2008 graduated from purdue mechanical engineer bright-eyed bushy-tailed and ready to go take over the world gary and i got married right out of college and i went to work and just like so many people out there just said hey i want to be successful i want to make a difference i want that next promotion and i'm going to get to work and gary i only had one strategy and that was work harder and get smarter <laughs> Like, that's all I knew how to do. I worked all through school. Why wouldn't that work in my, yeah, my sounds career, reasonable. right? Yeah, it makes sense. Well, five years later, I found myself in a place that I never dreamed I would go. And it was the last place on earth I ever wanted to be. And that was sitting in a beautiful office, this big, you know, mahogany shelves, gorgeous office that was belonging to my divorce attorney. Mm. Sitting there, processing paperwork, feeling depressed, 
feeling discouraged, embarrassed, wondering what happened? How did my life that was going so well, everybody told me I was going to be so successful and, and, and Zach's you know, the poster child of everything that you want in life, that's what I thought. And here I am getting divorced and I would have traded all of those accolades at work for another chance to do life differently. But the truth is, Gary, I didn't even know what went wrong. And here I am incredibly burned out and I could have literally just walked away from engineering. It's like, this doesn't matter. None of it matters. And the truth is, you know, there's no amount of success at work that makes up for failure at home. Yeah. And, and so I really started digging into this idea of burnout because I needed to recover. <laughs> My own life was at stake, right? And, and there's two big things that I learned the hard way. And, and the truth about burnout is first, it's not just the rock bottom moment. You know, even the word itself, burnout, we have this mm -hmm. mental image of the tank is empty. I'm literally out of gas. Right. And yes, that is a place that is really frustrating and difficult and we call it burnout. But Gary, burnout begins the moment that you're burning fuel faster than you're filling the tank. And that's why it's such a slippery slope for people. And by the time you realize what's going wrong, it's often too late. And that's because of the second truth about burnout. Our tendency is to look at what we are doing and say, okay, well, what's wrong about the way that I'm living life right now? Am I working too many hours? Am I, you know, allowing too many stressors to come my way with projects or other things? Do I need to go on a vacation? Well, here's the thing. Burnout's not caused by what you're doing. Burnout is caused by what you're not doing. And that's why it's a blind spot for so many people. Yeah. And when you take these two truths and you start to assess really where am I at, for one, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I've already begun going down the road to burnout. I'm burning fuel faster than I'm filling my tank. My energy is being depleted. Yeah. And, and you know, this, this doesn't end well. Let's be honest with our trajectory. But then when it comes to making a course correction, it's not about how many hours you're working. It's not about these things. It's about what you've stopped doing, the things that you're no longer doing that are mandatories for you to stay healthy, whole, and balanced. Wow. Well, you know, Zach, there are two things that really popped out and resonated with me. The first one was, and then I'll just put it in my words, my just how I understand. First one is order. And I was in the same boat with you, Zach, you know, in my career, I was focused on my career and not my family, not my wife, not my kids. And I re until I realized that I had flipped my order where I put career first and then family second, that's where I was doing the damage. But once I flipped it, I put family first, career second, my career started getting better. My family life got better, but my career started getting better. And it sounds weird, but that order was what really changed my my life and then the second thing that i think you share that resonated with me is truly impactful is you can't pour from an empty cup yeah. and i yeah. love your i love your uh, analogy of you know you're burning more fuel than you're putting into the tank because that really is true i mean we all have to burn fuel we all have to do the things we need to do to be successful in life but you got to fill the tank yes. otherwise like you said you're gonna burn out so good Zach, the second thing you, you talked about was you don't believe in work-life balance. This is an interesting one, man. You're kind of going against the grain with this this concept. Yeah, like, so, wait a minute. Didn't you just say don't burn out? What is right? this? <laughs> what are you talking about, Zach? Bring it. Hey, share with us what that means to you. Yeah. When you hear the phrase work-life balance, in our minds, a, a picture is formed. And for most people, it looks like a scale. You know, this idea of balance and on one side of the scale is work and on the other side of the scale is this thing we call life as if somehow those are totally different. <laughs> and we're, we're looking for what? Are, are they supposed to be equal? Uh, is the scale supposed to be at the same level? Is it is life supposed to be heavier than work? Like, what are we really seeking to accomplish? And and if we say equal, what does that even mean? Because work is a part of your life. And yeah. and here's the truth. If you're hating your job. Let's say work is really bad for you. Mm -hmm. I got news for you, Gary. There's no amount of fun you can have on the weekend that balances hating your career. 
Oh. Like, that's more like bipolar than balance to me. Truly. It's like, I go to work and hate my life. I go home and, and try to party myself into a, a happy life. Like, you can't do that. It doesn't work. It, it actually just creates even more tension and more stress. So the mental model that's that's formulated by this phrase work-life balance, I absolutely despise. Now, it's meant well. I understand yeah. the heart behind the phrase, but it implies, and, and then subconsciously, we act in a way to try to create this mysterious balance. And, and I don't think that's the right way to think about it. For mm -hmm. me, Gary, you're a whole person. And, and you have one life. So for me, it's more like a Venn diagram where there's one big circle that is called life. And uh -huh. inside of that circle, there are many different circles. One of them that's usually quite large is called work. Yeah. You know, to your point, there's one that's family. There might be faith, your health, you know, giving, different relationships, all of these things matter. And the question is not, how do we keep them all in perfect balance? The question is, how do you, in any given moment, invest your time and manage your energy amongst your whole life to feel a sense of harmony, a sense of maybe separation and boundaries where those need to be placed? And we could even maybe say whole life balance might be the closest phrase that, that to me feels connected to this idea. Right. And, and it's, a, it's an active value. It's finding harmony it's finding balance it doesn't ever become static gary because mm -hmm. you may need to work extra one week yeah and you may need to go on vacation the next and there isn't a single way to live every day your whole life that's going to keep it all in balance that's not how it works oh my gosh that's, that's what a great concept a way to, to to view this because there's only so much of us that we can give to the world and you've you've kind of created this analogy where all of everything that the world demands of us and even what we demand of ourselves has to fit in all that we are yeah and <laughs> you, i mean there's, right. we can't give more than what we are and what we you know and and so it's you and there's it fluctuates and it's a dynamic yeah. give and take because yeah. like you said work may demand more family may demand more or your personal health may demand more so you got to continuously shift those dynamics within that whole I yeah. like that so much and better maybe you can relate to this Gary but I remember like when I was at work I felt guilty about not being at home and taking care of that and when I was at home I felt guilty about not finishing <laughs> the project when I was at work and it's like you can't you just can't win and once yeah. you get into this mindset of a whole life balance it's like you know what, if right now the best decision for me and my life is to work hard on a thing that needs some extra attention, I'm going to give that my whole heart, my whole focus, and I'm going to do that. Yeah. But then I'm going to pull back from that and recognize if I keep doing that for too long, these mm. other areas are going to deplete to a level Suffer. that isn't going to work. So, I, yeah. okay, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work a little bit less. I might put in 30 hours this week and I'm going to spend more time with my kids yeah. or whatever that needs to be for you, right? And so... I think that's something we need to give ourselves permission to, to be fully present with our priority. Yeah. And it, it doesn't always have to be the same thing. Oh, so good. So good. I, I love that. And, you know, Zach, you, you came up with a third point as well. And this one is courage and its role in our success. So this is an interesting one. You know, we talk about courage, you know, we talk about the cowardly lion. That's the first thing that kind of comes to my head. but. Tell us what courage and its role in our success means to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned at the beginning, Gary, that this is a message not just for engineers, it's for everyone. And I absolutely agree with that. But I'll speak from my experience as an engineer and the clients that I have the privilege of supporting, that when we enter the workplace mm -hmm. and any domain of our lives, but I see it at work so much, the thing that actually stops us from growth and success is very rarely the technical acumen. These engineers are brilliant. They have multiple degrees. They have every certification there is. They love to learn. They're, they're overqualified for their role in most cases by the time they get to me. And that's because you know, now they feel stuck. They feel frustrated. They don't know how yeah. to grow without burnout. And when we look at the situation, what happens, Gary, is to get where they want to go, they're going to have to get out of their comfort zone, face their fears, yeah. and take action. 
know, maybe that's a fear of presenting in front of a, an audience. Maybe that's a fear of cold calling a senior leader, you know, mm -hmm. for asking for a mentorship. Maybe it's the fear of submitting a proposal that people might reject or they don't like your idea. Maybe it's that fear of speaking up and asking a question in a meeting that you don't understand what's going on, but you don't want to be seen as the fool. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that we face in, in our lives where fear is the barrier. Mm -hmm. And so what is courage? Courage is that muscle from the heart outward into the world that says, I will face the fear and do uh -huh. it anyway. Oh, so good. And if we don't have that, then fear wins oh, and you're going to so stay good. stuck. Yeah. So to me, courage is the catalyst to transformation because everything you want to transform into is uh -huh. on the other side of your comfort zone and fear is there at the edge greeting you every single day. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's powerful. And you know, and I think there's there's you have to have courage to ask yourself, what do I want? Because a lot of us just kind of get into this plateau, hey, I'm good at this, good enough, I'm here doing my thing. But you gotta have courage to say, okay, what's next? What what do I want? And a lot of us we get what we would get because we don't ask ourselves what we want. And so I love how you talk about courage is like asking ourselves, what do we want? and then taking that next step. And sometimes to your to your point, to give you credit, Zach, we have to engage a coach to help us talk through those things. Okay, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about wanting something, but I don't know how to articulate it or how to formulate it or whatever. But courage, there's, there's courage in asking for help as well mm -hmm. to get us out of that plateau. And, and I love how you've talked about this. And, and I love, Zach, all of the points that you've shared, the truth about burnout, the work-life balance is a myth. And that, the, and I love your concept with it. And then courage being so powerful and insp inspiring. And, and we're at the, the end of our time. Zach, I could talk to you for hours because you just, you have such, such great concepts and great uh, way to articulate uh, inspiration. But before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Gary, I think with where we were just at, the most important thing I could say is that it also takes courage to be happy. And you know, my podcast is called The Happy Engineer. And yeah. literally today on LinkedIn, I had an engineering leader who's very successful on paper message me via LinkedIn. And he said, Zach, I don't actually believe that engineers can be happy. That's how lost our society is becoming in terms of the quality of life that we can experience. And, and frankly, I understand why he might feel that way with the world we live in and the challenges that he faces every single day at the office. And it takes courage to be happy. Mm. And so if you don't feel that sense of peace, that sense of joy, that sense of happiness in your life, I would encourage you to look at where is fear winning and where do you need to show up today with courage? Oh my gosh. Doc, I can't add anything else to that. That is so good. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Zach, you've been brilliant. This has been such a great conversation. Guys, I want to encourage you to go follow Zach. I'm going to put uh, Zach's website link in the show notes so you can connect with him. Even if you're not an engineer, go follow him. Go listen to his podcast because his concepts are just universal across the board and they're so valuable. Zach, thank you again, sir. I appreciate you. And we will see you on the next episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. Thank you. all